In this session, we'll look at a way to add underground utilities to an InfraWorks model using shapefiles. As you can see, I'm starting out in MAP3D. I thought we could use this environment to take a quick tour of my shapefile data before I drop it into InfraWorks. I'll start by bringing up Windows Explorer. And then in the shapefiles folder, you can see that I have a file here for storm manholes and then one for storm pipes. I'm going to insert the pipes first. I'll do that by clicking and holding on the shapefile and I'll drag and drop it into the interface. And then to make this geometry a little easier to see, I'm going to double click on the layer and then I'll click the ellipsis next to style. Let's change the color to yellow and then I'll change the width of the pipes to 10. I'll click apply and close and then I'll click to close the style editor. So there's the geometry representing my storm pipes. Now let's insert the manholes. We'll go back to Windows Explorer and then back in the shapefiles folder, I will grab the manholes shapefile and I'll drag and drop this into the interface. I will then make it a little easier to see. We'll double click the layer. I'll click the ellipsis next to style. Let's make the manholes light blue and I'll set their size to four. I'll click apply and close and then I'll close the style editor. So right here on screen, we can see the extents of my storm sewer network. Now let's take a look at the data that came along with these shape files. I'm going to select a structure first. I will then right click and I'll come down and choose show data table. And as you can see, the shape file includes the bare minimum of attribution. It's maintaining the rim elevation, the manhole diameter, and the sump distance. This is the distance from the rim to the bottom of the structure. Knowing that, let me press escape and we'll take a look at the pipe data. I'll select one of the pipes. I'll right click and I'll choose show data table. The pipes are maintaining the pipe diameter, material, and the invert on the high and low side of the pipe. As you can see, the attribution in both of these shapefiles is very similar to what a survey crew might collect when capturing data out in the field. I'm going to press escape to deselect. Now that we've reviewed our shapefile data, let's use it to build a 3D model in InfraWorks. Over in InfraWorks, I have created a model of that same roadway area. I'm going to insert the structures first. I'll do that by bringing back Windows Explorer. I'll go back to the shapefiles folder, and then I will drag and drop the manholes into InfraWorks. I can then tell InfraWorks what this data represents. I'll open the type menu and I'll choose pipeline connectors. I can then use these settings below along with the shapefile attribution to stylize this data. We'll start with elevation offset. Probably not the best description. Really this means rim elevation. If I open this menu to the right, I can see the attributes in the shapefile. From here I'll select rim. I can then assign the structure size in the X and Y direction. Let's open the menu and I'll choose manhole diameter for both of these. Finally, I've got the structure height. This is the distance from the rim to the bottom of the structure. If you remember the data in the shape file, my sump distance was a positive number. This one needs to be negative. Not a problem, we can simply create an expression. I'll click the expression editor, and then I'll open the numeric field. I'll double click on sump distance, and then I'll click in front and I'll add a negative symbol. I will then click okay. Finally, we can select a style for the structures. I'm going to click the pencil and I'll select manhole round. I will then click OK and I'll choose Close and Refresh. At this point I can close data sources and then I'm going to double click on one of these structures and I'll press Escape and we can see them there in the roadway. If I orbit around underneath the road we can see all of the structures going on down there. Let's orbit this back up and we'll add the storm pipes next. I'll go back to Windows Explorer. In the Shapefiles folder I will select the Pipes shapefile and I'll drag and drop that into InfraWorks. I will tell InfraWorks that this data represents pipelines. And fortunately, I have invert information. If I did not, I could always assign their depth by an elevation offset from the existing surface. Since I have the inverts, we'll leverage those. For elevation from, that is going to be the high side invert. And elevation to, that'll be the low side. I will then assign the pipe size in the X and Y direction. We'll choose the pipe size attribute for both of those. And then finally, we'll select a style. For this application, I'm going to choose Concrete Pipe. I'll click OK, and then I'll choose Close and Refresh. Let's close data sources, and then we'll orbit around underneath the ground, and we can see all of those pipes connecting the structures. Now if I hold down the forward arrow on my keyboard, I can kind of drive around under the ground and tour these utilities. Let's rotate up. I'll orbit this around so we can look the other way. Another way we can review underground utilities is by changing our view. For example, I'm going to come up and open the view menu and I'll flip it from conceptual to engineering. This will apply some transparency to the surface, making it very easy to see the utilities underneath. 
So if the utilities stored in your GIS system include vertical attribution, or if you can export surveyed utility data into a geospatial format, InfoWorks can make it easy to model those utilities in 3D by simply dragging and dropping some shape files. Would you like to explore other Autodesk infrastructure ideas and workflows? If so, please visit the Civil Immersion blog by scanning the QR code or by following the URL listed below.